What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of All the Mods 7 to the Sky. Guys, last episode, we had a problem with the radiation. This episode, we have no longer the problem. In fact, I can take off this hazmat suit over here. Yes, all of the radiation has essentially dissipated from the area. Mm hmm. I have keyed for a while. It's all gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know how long it took hours. It literally took hours. Uh, so let's not make that mistake again, that's for sure. I would prefer to keep my armor on. Oh, right, and because I have that extra HP, my hunger is going down, so now I need to come back to the base so <laughs> my saturation is full and we can regen all of the health that we're missing. So today, now that we have all of the stuff ready to make this super critical phase shifter machine, I would like to actually make this machine today. So the way this thing works is we need an SPS port for the supercharged coil. This is how you inject power into it. And then we need two more ports to extract the gas and insert the gas. We're going to be inserting polonium, I believe, and we're taking out the antimatter pellets or the antimatter gas. Uh, yeah, we put polonium in, we get antimatter out. But look at this, it costs 400 million fe per tick so 400 million per one millibucket wow uh yeah we have power i don't know if we can wirelessly transmit 400 million but yeah we have a lot of power stored up i don't think that's going to be an issue but i don't know if these guys even with these little things flipped here i don't know if we can send that much power we're going to find out uh, the next thing is, though, that we need to figure out where we are actually putting this machine, the super critical phase shifter. So, oh, I got some leads, apparently. Oh, there is... Where? What? <laughs> okay. There. Oh, the wandering trader's over here. I was like, what the heck? Where did the wandering trader even go? Huh. All right, well, wandering trader's there. He doesn't have anything good, and we got a couple llamas on top. Anyway, so we need to figure out where it is that we are going to be putting our super critical phase shifter. It is another multi-block, so I need to extend up this platform. It is going to be somewhere in this area. Probably makes sense to put it here since we need polonium. And I believe we're making polonium from this thing, right? I believe so. I'll have to double check that. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and expand this out and make a platform so we can build our super critical phase shifter. All right, so to start off our super critical phase shifter multi-block, the first thing we need to do is use the type of glass. Well, we're using reactor glass. I think there is another type that we could have used, but this is what we're using. So we just have to place down a three by three of the reactor glass and then extend it by three blocks on every cardinal, right? So we will have essentially a plus sign when we're done. Oh my goodness, this stuff is hard to place. Okay, so that's what we're looking like, right? So it's a three by three. It's essentially a five by five with the corners removed is what we're working with here. So then you put the SPS casing all around the outside of this. So yeah, anywhere that the glass is touching, well, I guess the sides of the glass are exposed to air. We need to cover that up. And that's essentially what one of the sides look like. So we take this and we flip it on its end. We place one here, 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 and then on top, so we make this pattern six times, and then we have ourselves our reactor, or I guess our super critical phase shifter. So uh, we can do this, and then three more layers, right like so, and then we just put in three on either side like a so, and then we wrap that with the blocks all the way around it, and then we do that on all the corners and the top, and we're done basically is how this works. So let me just go ahead and build this multi-block all the way and we'll be right back. And with like a lot of the multi-blocks, the mechanism, as soon as you place the last block, you get these red particles to show you that you have done it correctly. And if you don't get those particles, you probably did it incorrectly or you have your particles turned off in your video settings. Uh, yeah, either way. So this is what the, the multi-block thing looks like. It's not really impressive looking as a multi-block, but that's what it is. Um, but yeah, we need to have a spot so we can put in power, right? 
So we'll do that and you see we get the confirming red particles as we do this. And then we need a supercharged coil. This is how the power is gonna come into this thing. So we'll do that. And then we need to find a spot for us to put in and take out the gas. So I guess we can just do it down here. This should be fine. So we'll put in two more ports, port in a port. Again, the confirming particles. And we need to configure gases. So maybe plutonium here and then so that's the output input. So this will be output. Yeah. And then we'll have our, what are we even making? I can't remember our antimatter come out on this side. Yeah. I think that's probably going to be fine. Yeah, that should be fine. Right. So now that we have this set up, I guess we also need to provide it with power. So is this little flux point going to be enough? I have no idea, but it won't use any power until we actually, Oh, I guess it's using power. Is it? Where is that going? Oh, it's filling this up. Oh, okay. So let's bypass limit. I guess we can send 400 million FE per tick. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, that looks pretty promising that we can send that much power. Okay. So now we need to get the plutonium. I'm sorry. Polonium. We need to get the polonium in there. And that is made through the solar neutron activator. Nuclear waste turns into this stuff only during the daytime. So I guess we're going to be limited by the amount of these solar neutron activators in order to do this. So I guess the next step is I need to connect these pipes over here that are making the or putting the nuclear waste into these radioactive waste barrels and have it go into here so we can start making some more polonium. All right. So I have this ultimate pressurized tube extracting out of this radioactive waste barrel. This is one of the ones, the lucky ones that gets filled for whatever reason, I'm not sure why. Seems like we got a lot of these things that are actually starting to fill up now. I'm starting to wonder, maybe my calculations are wrong. We're making way more nuclear waste than what I thought we were. I don't know. Anyway, so we have the nuclear waste coming over to here. We have polonium here. So the next step is we need to take that polonium and put it into this guy like so. Oh, that's exactly in line. Perfect. Whoa. Okay, so things are happening. That's looking a little crazy. How much power? 52 million. I think we're probably limited. Okay, and now we're slowing down. Uh, either we're limited by 52 million because of how much polonium we're making, or that's how much we can only send back. I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we have this stuff being stored internally. So we have 60 millibuckets. We've done it. <laughs> How much antimatter do we need? So 1000 millibuckets of antimatter turns into one antimatter pellet. So I need a chemical crystallizer in order to do this. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a chemical crystallizer, but I'm sure we have everything to make this thing. But yeah, this. This machine, this is crazy looking. Ooh. Right, so a couple of things. We're being rate limited by how fast our SPS can go based on our induction matrix here. Yeah, the problem is we can only output 52 million FE per tick. And I was looking at this, that is because we're using one ultimate induction provider, right? So one of these can output 52 million FE per tick. If we want to do 400 million, which that particular thing needs, then we're going to need to add three more of these in there. And if we're going to upgrade this thing with four, well, I guess three more of these, we should probably also upgrade it with like three more of our capacity cells. We have two in there now. Let's add three more. So ultimate induction cells and ultimate induction provider. We take a look ultimate we have the induction cells here if we make three of those what does that take a bunch of stuff i'm gonna go ahead and start that up and then we need the induction provider we want three more of those and that is also going to require a bunch of stuff so we'll tell the system to craft both of those things yeah so i don't know how long this is going to take <laughs> probably a while uh, but aside from that, if we're going to expand this thing out, so that'd be three more blocks on the inside, which means this wall needs to shift over, which means we need 
essentially an entire ring of these induction casings to support that on both sides. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We need 24 more induction casings, I do believe, in order to fit that in there. So uh, again, induction casing 24. I think these are probably the cheapest of all the things we're making. It looks like it. Okay, so we got those things all queued up here. And when those are done, we should be able to expand out our induction matrix to be able to send the maximum amount of power that our SPS requires and store a lot more for future. And I guess, I guess the important thing is we are starting to fill up, which is why I want to increase our capacity. Well, the scary bit of upgrading your power system is always disconnecting the power. It's like, oh no, what do we got going on here? What's going to break if we disconnect the power? Well, the number one thing is, is our applied energistics going to go offline? And the answer is no, because we have all these dense energy cells here. We have eight of them in total, which is way more than what I need. Just having one of them on here is, is something that you want to do. But I just added all these in here because we could. <laughs> but anyway, uh, that will keep the system up and running. So the other thing is like, what is the applied energistics doing? So we are still processing iron and we are still processing a little bit of uranium. I think we're making the yellow cake is what we're doing. So yeah, those things will go offline for a short amount of time. And then I think also the machine that we have over here, uh, that's producing the fuel for our reactor. This will go offline, but we have a lot stocked up and I think there's actually some in there. Yeah, we have like 8,000 buckets of fizzle fuel in our quantum and take the porters. So honestly, I don't think we're going to have any issues at all when we disconnect this power. I think we should just be able to go ahead and do this. So yeah, I got to break the multi block. We got to put our ultimate induction providers in there, our ultimate induction cells, and then wrap everything back up with the induction casing. So let me just go ahead and do that real quick and we'll be back. Did I say we we're going to make just three more of those induction providers? Yeah. Okay. So I was thinking in my head for some reason they were a hundred million each when in fact they're 50 million each. So we had to make a few more than that. So we have a total of eight providers in there now. And then I fill up the empty space with extra cells. So we have quite a bit of storage. Now we can hold 16 TFEs and we currently have 2.18, which is Remember that was nearly full previously. So yeah, <laughs> we have quite a bit of space in there. Uh, you can see I extended the front out by one full block. Yeah. So uh, I put in another three by three uh, blocks with the providers and the, the capacitor blocks, the storage ones, whatever. So anyway, if we come back over to where we've been working over here. Yeah. So our polonium, well, I guess, our SPS, uh, super critical phase shifter. This thing was being rate limited. It can only do 50 million at a time, or I guess 52 million worth of power at a time. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so we should be able to do the, the maximum this can do with one of these SPS ports. You can in fact make this go faster. If you have more than one, I think two is the limit though, with two of those, um, whatever that block is called. I can't remember off the top of my head. If you have two of those in there, yeah, you can max this machine out, but yeah. So basically you really only need one, but you can, if you want to get maximum on there, go two. So to see if this is going to go much faster, let's go ahead. How is this doing here? This has 400 buckets. Okay. So we will just extract out of there, which Oh, it won't do anything right now because it is nighttime, right? This machine needs daytime. So let's go ahead and sleep till day. So that machine will start making us some polonium and we'll see what's going on here. Okay. So this all turned back on. We are receiving 45, 46 millibuckets per tick. And this is going full blast. You can see it is using 400 million. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're going quite fast here. So we have 157 millibuckets. We needed 1,000. 1,000 millibuckets for this antimatter pellet. We still have to make this machine, the chemical crystallizer, but I feel like that's not a big deal. Now, the other thing that I want to see is while this is running, 
How is our battery looking? Like, are we losing power really fast? We're only making 2 million per tick. We're using 400. So, like, is this going down really fast? I mean, it's not really fast, but obviously we won't be able to keep up with this power for for more than, like, a couple of minutes, it looks like. Yeah, so anyway, huh. I think what we should do, maybe we should... What should we do? I feel like even though we're not using the maximum amount that it can do, it's still using the same amount of power, right? So this thing... We're processing 0 0.03 millibuckets per tick, but it's still using 400 million FE per tick, right? I feel like maybe if we store up polonium and then turn this thing on, it'll be more power efficient? That's my thinking anyway. So let me pop the power off this. We'll let this fill up. Then the pipe can fill up, right? And then this machine can fill up a little bit, well, I guess over here. And then when we're ready, we can turn this thing on and then convert a whole bunch of polonium into the antimatter. I think that's probably our best bet here. Not entirely sure, but I feel like, yeah, it's it was like using hardly any, not very efficient, but still using the, the same amount of power to do that. I don't think that's the way to go. Well, anyway, let's let this thing fill up for a while. I'll let this pipe fill up. It's got a, got a long way to go before this thing gets full. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we'll let this fill up for quite some time and then we'll be back. All right, guys, so I've been sitting here and camping this for a little while now. I would say I've been processing some of this polonium as it's been coming in. And currently we are just waiting until we get to 66 buckets on this pipe and then we should be done. We currently have 932 millibuckets worth of antimatter in here. Um, but yeah, there's two buckets being stored and that'll just turn into two millibuckets, right? So yeah, we just need this one bucket to finish up. And what I'm going to do is I need to switch this over to gas. Gases. There we go. And I kind of want to stop this just so we don't have ex extra stuff in here. So there we go. Yeah, just a little bit extra, not a whole lot, just a little bit. So coming over here, putting this on like this, bypass limit, we'll process all of that through, and there we go. We have one, oh, I was one bucket off. Dang it, <laughs> it's so close. Yeah, so we have one full bucket of antimatter. That's awesome. Okay, so now that we have that done, we should be able to, oh, I need... Uh, what are these pressurized tube? Pressurized tube. Apparently I hit caps lock as well. Okay, so we need this and this. Whoa, something just happened. So we have antimatter in here. Oh, this needs power, doesn't it? Okay, so uh, I guess I can use the, the power that's in my thing. And there is one antimatter pellet. Now, here's the thing that I was thinking about. This probably isn't a great use of uh, of our power and stuff but if we are taking let's go back here real quick if we are taking polonium which has radioactivity as it says on the tooltip here and we convert it into antimatter which does not it does require an enormous amount of power to do this but we turn it into something that doesn't have radioactivity anymore so that would be one way to get rid of extra stuff but this is the important thing here, this antimatter pellet. <laughs> uh, if we look at the uses for this, what all can we do with this? We can make a super massive QIO drive. That is a lot of items and a lot of types. That does seem super massive. Uh, we can turn it into a pulsating black hole. Oh, are we going to need another one of these? I think we're probably going to need more. Oh my goodness. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind here. So maybe... Maybe I should just have the nuclear waste coming in here all the time and just trying to make pellets? Hmm. The problem with that is, as we saw before, this thing requires 400 million FE per tick, right? And even if it's just getting a slight trickle of that in there, it's using that amount of power. So how do we, hmm, how do we satisfy that? I'm not entirely sure. I guess maybe if we rate limit the amount of power that goes into this, it will only run when it gets a certain amount of power. 
and then I'll, I don't know how that all works. Maybe, anyway, that's just something to think about. Uh, but it looks like we will need more antimatter in the future. I guess another thing we could do is maybe just put a gas tank here or a few of them that's collecting the polonium from this that we will eventually feed into our reactor. That's another thing that we could do, just have like a large supply of that on standby for later. Okay, well anyway, our antimatter pellet is now completed. So for now, we will just leave all of that alone. And coming back into here, Philosopher's Fuel, we need the antimatter pellet in the bottom middle. Boom. So right now, we are only missing one item from the Philosopher's Fuel. So randomly, I was flying around the base here, and I came to the Batania area, and I picked something up with my magnet. I was like, what the heck is that? Oh, right. <laughs> Faded Nether Star, yeah, so this thing we last used, I don't know how long ago, but it's been sitting here on the ground since then. We Our little system here that picks it up and drops it back on the ground has been working well, keeping it from despawning, but all of our mana is full, so it hasn't <laughs> used any of it, and it's just been sitting there as an item waiting to be used as mana, so I thought that was pretty cool anyway. Uh, but yeah, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here for today. We are done with the mechanism portion of the Philosopher's Fuel. We finally got ourselves that antimatter pellet. The uh, next thing we have to do is get into the FTB mod. Yeah, that's kind of like the, the Greg Tech style mod. We'll have to figure out how the antimatter is made with that. Not entirely sure. We'll have to figure that out. In the past, it was made with you, you matter. I don't know how that works now. <laughs> anyway, that'll have to wait for next time. But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.